Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Today I have a special topic. It's a special topic for our special dogs, our senior dogs, fitness for our senior dogs. And this is near and dear to my heart. Oh, one of my dogs, my Doberman, Rissa, she's going to be uh, 11 years old in just a couple of weeks. And if, uh, if any of you are familiar with the Doberman breed, um, getting longevity in the Dobermans, it's, uh, it's not that common. They actually have a special registry for Dobermans once they reach 10 years old, um, that their name can be put on it to get recognition for living 10 years. So um, she's actually been diagnosed with Wobbler's disease. She's had it for a number of years now. And uh, we're just amazed. She just keeps on plugging along. I have another dog who's gonna be turning nine years old. And uh, you know, when you live with the senior dogs, um, you know, there are special issues and special needs that come up. And so since I'm experiencing that, uh, living that, having concern for, for my senior dogs, um, there are certain things that I wanted to help you guys remember and to think about. And even if you don't have a senior dog right now, hopefully you do have a dog that's gonna live to be, you know, a ripe old age and be around for a really long time. And uh, these are, you know, some of the things I'm going to be talking about specific to senior dogs can also apply um, to younger dogs. And especially if you have special needs and dogs that have um, physical limitations. And, uh, and it's also good to know this, you know, as your dog's aging, to be thinking about how to best prepare. And when you do encounter some of their special needs as they get older, um, what to be prepared, prepared for and how to deal with it. So um, thanks for joining me. And if you're just now hopping in, um, put a comment. Let me know. Uh, do you live with a senior dog? Um, have you had senior dogs? Uh, what, what are some of the special needs that you have seen that they've needed? And um, I, I'd love to hear from you. If this is your first time, thank you. Thank you for joining me. My name is Erica Bowling, and I am the owner and founder of Northeast Canine Conditioning. And uh, I love helping people take their sport dogs and working dogs and helping them really reach peak performance. But, you know, I love just spreading the word about canine fitness to, to everybody, just to help all of our dogs that are out there. So, um, Colleen, thank you for joining us. Conchetta, Michael, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, let us know, do you, do you have senior dogs? What are you dealing with with the senior dogs? And, you know, I actually wrote about this not too long ago. Um, I sent it out. I had a short article and uh, an email and a blog that I put out. And, you know, one of the things that strikes me when it comes to, especially think about the sport dogs and the working dogs, and also when I had to retire one of my own dogs, is what we frequently see is when people have their young dogs and there's so much focus on training, competing, um, having a working dog, getting them um, trained so that they can do their job. And then what typically happens, whether it's a sport dog or a working dog, it's not unusual when they get the age um, you know, to retire, that it, usually people, a lot of times people are thinking about the next up and coming dog um, for work or for competition. And what happens is once we retire a dog, you know, maybe when we go training every weekend, maybe the older dog stays home or maybe they come, but they do more, you know, sitting around waiting while you're working the younger dog. And what I would like people to think about is humans through the aging process, it's very similar to what's, what the dogs are experiencing. You know, um, our, we start to see a decline in muscle tone. Um, our senses, you know, our seeing, our sight, our hearing, our balance. As we get older, you know, we, we, our senses, we're just not as sharp. Um, when we think about humans, you know, as you start, it's actually not when you get very old, we already start losing muscle tone unless you really keep up your exercise. Women, especially, we start to, um, you know, think about bone density and stuff like that. And with humans, there's tremendous benefits and value in your senior years as you're getting older and not even in your senior years, you know, when you're in your 30s and 40s, um, you know, you, there's a difference. There's a difference in your body. There's a difference in your strength. But if you keep up with physical exercise, you can, you know, I always feel like if there's anything that can slow down the aging process that can, you know, we can't, you know, stay forever one age. And people are always trying to look for this magic formula, you know, to delay the aging process and make it so we don't look so old. <laughs> um, uh, the magic, the magic 
ticket here is um, is exercise and keeping fit and keeping active. And you know, all you have to do, you've probably seen these on TV where you see um, the before and after pictures and you see people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. And you see these people that have kept up in the gym and they've kept physically fit and they kept active. And they've got, you know, sometimes you see them and their bodies are, their bodies are better than, you know, some of the 20 year olds. And, um, and so, you know, it's this old saying, you know, you either use it or you lose it. <laughs> and so I would argue in, in, in this case, you know, if you're going to exercise and have a fitness program for your dog, physically and mentally, I would say, you know, there are, there can be more benefits for your senior dog to stay fit and active than the younger dog they i you know they need it that much more because it, they're losing the you know they're they're losing these abilities that much more quickly as they're aging and you know with a lot of these older dogs as they're getting older um a lot of times i know my last doberman he was about 78 pounds and you know a lot of times when it gets to the point where you have to put them down a lot of times it's a mobility issue that they, they just can't get around, they can't keep moving, or they're too big, and you can't carry them up and down three flights of stairs as they're aging, because they can't get around. And so, you know, one of the key things here is keeping them fit and keeping them active, so you can keep them active as long as possible, so that they can stay mobile, so that, you know, they, they can go longer and be in less pain and, and have a more active life. So, um, so let me see. So yeah, exercise, and uh, Marilyn says, uh, You've had a lot of uh, experience with senior dogs. Yeah, Doberman and Papillon. Yeah, comment about your experiences. What, what kinds of things did you do? So, oh, we got Street Austin Clover here. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, what do you do for the senior dogs? So here's the thing, you know, exercise is good um, for most of our dogs. I mean, there's, there are instances, depending on health conditions and stuff, where some exercises might not be good. You know, always get clearance with a, you know, through a veterinarian to make sure that what you're doing um, is right for your dog. But in general, fitness and exercise and activity is going to be good. And um, so, so okay, so what do you do? So when, when you're in your 50s and 60s, right? You, when you're in your 50s and 60s and you're in the gym working out, you're not doing the same routine as you're doing when you're 22, right? And like right now, uh, when I used to go boxing, say, five years ago, four years ago, I was boxing four days a week, sometimes five days a week. And you know what happened over time? My wrist started bothering me. My shoulders started bothering me. And now, like, I still can box, but I can't do it as frequently or as intense that many days in a row. But I can still do it, right? So when we think about what can we do with our dogs, well, yeah, we're going to keep them, if we can, keep them active, keep them mobile. But what are the, some of the special considerations that we have to have for those senior dogs? So um, let me see if anybody else. Uh, oh, thank you, Michael, for sharing. Uh, yeah, you guys, uh, normally I share the links right before I go live, but I didn't get a chance today. So feel free to invite people over. So I did throw a couple things here for just some. Some of these are reminders and some of these might be things that you hadn't really thought about. So, um, so one of the things I already mentioned was kind of limitations to mobility. And um, as dogs age, some of the conditions, we start to see more health issues. We start to see, you know, just more problem areas showing up. Also, we might see where some of their old injuries, where maybe you, they recovered from the injury. And then over time, we start to see the aches and the pains and stuff from an old injury. Um, it's not uncommon you have an injury that sometimes that might be an area where arthritis starts to set in. A huge, huge percent of the, percentage of the dogs end up with osteoarthritis. We're even seeing them getting arthritis, you know, at, at a young age. Things like osteoarthritis, the hip dysplasia, issues with their discs, issues with their vertebrae. Um, I know with my dog, um, Bachi, uh, we had an MRI done. He had uh, a slight deterioration of two discs in his neck and a slight narrowing of the spinal canal. A lot of these dogs, many of these breeds, it's not unusual to start seeing um, these types of issues with vertebrae, um, issues in the neck, issues along the spine, the lower back, and these types of things can limit mobility. Um, and so what we need to think about is supporting them when they need it at that time. And, you know, with my Doberman with Wobbler's disease, it started out with just a knuckling over of her front foot. 
and then it progressed to every occasional tripping and then it progressed to falling over every now and then and then we started to see it affecting her hind end where it's almost like she, she doesn't even it's almost like a paralysis it's like the leg just kind of caves up underneath her and so we've gone from her being able to be mobile completely on her own to using a harness to get in and out of the car and as it started to deteriorate instead of just getting out of the car we then used the harness to help her at first it was going just down the steps she could go up the steps okay but not down the steps and i would i would have the handle there in the harness ready to help if she needed it but my philosophy was you know if she can do it on her own encourage her to use i don't want to have her overcompensate and rely on me too much i don't want the more that she relies on me the more that i'm lifting her and that she's using me to assist her she's not using those muscles she's not using her body as much so the approach that i've used with her is i only intervene when i have to i only intervene if it's an issue where of danger of her falling down the stairs um or you know um keeping her from falling over but if if she's struggling and she's trying hard to go up the stairs and she's struggling but she she can do it on her own and i'm just there to support her if she needs you know for me to quickly grab her my you know i've always been like you know let her encourage her to use those muscles and do as much as she can and i only intervene when i need to but i'm prepared to and i have the harness on her i have the harness ready um and so you may find that as your dog is getting older you may have a harness where just supporting the front end around the chest is fine over time and depending on the issues you might need a harness with two handles you might have one where you're supporting in the front of the dog and the back of the dog um and you know these are the things to be thinking about another thing with the senior dogs when they start you know having issues with balance and mobility is um i have a lot of hardwood floors and so as my Doberman, Rissa, as her strength to started, she started to deteriorate, her muscle tone, her muscle mass, her strength in her hindquarters and her front end, you know, start to de decrease. It's harder now for her to stand on a slick surface. And so doing things like putting a lot of, you know, the, sh the throw carpets and the rugs, the rugs on the floor. Um, you know, we had rugs all over the hardwood floor to help her. Um, sometimes people put little booties um, that have the rubber traction on the feet. Um, one of the things that we notice is when she starts falling over and they start losing their balance and they start having issues where they're tripping and falling, they start to lose their confidence. And when they start to lose their confidence, they're going to be more hesitant to go out and try and push their body to do things that their body can do. But mentally, they're like, whoa, 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 you know, I can't go down the stairs. I, I tripped, you know, yesterday on the stairs and now I don't want to go by myself. And so we've worked really hard to, you know, keep her confidence up, to support her as much as we can, but not over support her. Let her use those muscles. Let her, you know, you know, balance herself and, and, and you know, do what she needs to do. But we're also very aware of um, when she does have the, you know, you can't print protect her all the time. There's going to be times where she's slipping or she trips or she falls and she doesn't have balance and she loses, you know, mobility in her front right leg. And each time, you know, when she has these incidences, it, we're in danger of her losing that confidence. And some days she has lower confidence and, and she doesn't want to do stuff. And so those are some of, some of the things to be, um, yeah, Marilyn says I have a mats on the floor for the Doberman difficulty with mobility. Um, so those are definitely, um, yeah, the, the booties, the slip booties. Um, I haven't used the non-slip booties, but I've, I've, I've known of people that have used them and, um, that they, they said it really helped, but you got to be careful. Um, you know, looking in the kitchen and the slip floors, the hardwood floors, you know, even having carpet, short carpet, um, some of the short carpet, um, depending on the strength of the dog, you know, their feet can slide out from under them. So those are the things you want to be thinking about, um, you know, mobility wise. Um, other things to be thinking about um, su supporting the mobility. I did research on different types of harnesses, um, but also you can do exercise with them, but you want to be thinking about low impact exercise. Now, what I what I do is if a dog, I'm going to sit and pull up one more uh, picture. Um, if a dog 
if a dog wants to, you know, run around and, and, and be all crazy and stuff, like, like my Doberman, for example, some of the stuff that I read, they were saying when dogs have wobbler's disease, they were saying, you know, some of the exercises and some of the things to limit their activity. Well, my Doberman, she, um, she loves to run. She loves to run. And she'll run, and that's not my Doberman. I just wanted to give you a visual of our. We have some great photos of senior dogs. <laughs> um, but when, you know, if she wants to run, I look at quality of life. If she wants to run and she wants to, you know, I know she's going to be sore the next day. Um, maybe the next day she's not going to get around. But she's so happy and like she's just like smiling. And I'm like, you know what? If she wants to do this, I'm going to let her do it if it makes her feel happy. Now, if it gets to a point where if I think they're in pain and, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to let them hurt themselves. But a lot of what I do is kind of let them go at their own pace. They kind of choose um, how much they want to exercise or if they want to run, if they don't want to run. Um, so I, I do a lot of just kind of listening to my dog. I'm paying attention to my dog, um, but also helping to protect my dog if they're putting themselves in a situation where they might get hurt. Um, but when it comes to exercise, when it comes to exercise, I have a, um, a couple things to, to, that I do that I think have been helpful. Um, now, definitely, there are dogs as they're getting older that they're fit and, you know, they could be 12 years old and, you know, running and jumping and be super active. But you just have to be aware of and, and limit some of that real high impact activity because, you know, it's harder on the body. It's harder on the joints. And um, so I'm not going to, if my dog is really fit and they're, they're into it and they have the energy and they can do it, I'm, you know, I'm going to let them run. They might jump around, but I'm not going to be jumping over, you know, like a French ring or, you know, this real high hurdle. Um, you know, I'm going to watch what they're doing. Another thing is lower impact or low impact exercises, soft surfaces. So if they are running around crazily, if they are, um, if there's a potential for them to fall, um, if they are doing low jumps soft ground, um, you know, in the grass, not on hard surfaces is going to be helpful. Swimming um, for most dogs, again, depending on the condition, there's going to be issues like when my dog has the iliopsoas, the pulled groin muscle, when his groin was in that area, in the groin area, like I don't want to swim him because the swimming and the movement and the extension of the back legs when he's kicking and stuff, if he's sore in that area, that's going to aggravate it. So again, it's going to depend on your dog and the conditions and the situations. But in general, swimming is is really really good, and it takes off some you know that high impact and stress on the on the joints compared to you know jumping on land and running at high speeds and stuff on on the ground or on the treadmill. Um, some of the things to think about um, when they're in the water is uh, older dogs might not be they might not regulate their body temperature as well. And warmer water is going to be better for them than cold water. So, I mean, just think of ourselves, you know, you've got aches and pains and, you know, you're like, who wants to go in freezing cold water? <laughs> um, but just to kind of loosen up the body and help the joints and help the mobility. Um, those are some things to think about and, and, you know, be aware that they, they might not, you know, be able to maintain that, that body temperature as well as when they were younger. Um, and so those are some things to think about. Um, when we talk about fitness, we do, um, Cavaletti. They're like, I don't have a picture. A, you know, somebody might want to pull up a picture of Cavaletti. They're low little jumps or little crosses, um, that the dog kind of steps over or trots over. And, um, I saw one person, this was a really neat suggestion was when the dog is doing kind of body, uh, awareness and balance activities and they're stepping over things or trotting over things is, um, think about, something something that's softer and more forgiving if the dog hits it with their feet. So you can still do exercises on the equipment. You can still trot over the Cavaletti. You can still do little jumps, you know, if the if your dog's up to it. But I really like the idea. They use like those noodles, those foam noodles that, that kids will use them in the swimming pool and stuff. And so um so if you think about it, if the dog's you know trotting over those foam noodles, if the dog loses its balance or trips or hits on it, it's not going to hurt them as if they're trotting over a ladder, you know, between the rungs of a ladder, or if they're balancing and trotting over, you know, pieces of, you know, going over four by fours. Um, so think about not just working them on softer surfaces, but if you are having them going over things, walking over things, through things, between things, 
just be aware that if they're older, they're losing their balance or they're maybe not as much, their body awareness is not as good as they're aging. That might be an issue. Um, so you might have a tendency of the dog that might, you know, slip, they might hit things and knock things. And so thinking about how can you just protect them and, you know, make it a softer blow if they're going to trip over something or if you're going to have them stepping over things like a Cavaletti. Um, so those, those are some things to be thinking about. Um, and for the cardio, um, another thing you want to think about is I always talk about the importance of warm up and cool down. But when you get, when you talk about your senior dogs, the warm up uh, the warm up is so uh, so much more important because it. I mean, if you're older, you have old injuries and aches and pains. You know what it's like when you get out of bed and you got an achy back or that shoulder you injured from a sports injury starts to bother you. Is it as you get older, it just takes you longer to you know get those joints going to get you know to get more mobile to to get that synovial fluid between the joints, you know, kind of just really helping you um, prepare for exercise. And so, you know, there are, there are a lot of people that still don't do any kind of warm up with their dogs. They'll have the dogs in the crates. They'll have the dogs will go out to the training field and they get them straight out of the car and they get them out and they start exercising them. And, um, you know, with a senior dog as with an aging dog, it's so, so very important that you, that you actually give them that nice warm up activity and um, start gradually. I like to start with a walk and um, a slow walk. You might do a fast walk. Um, if your dog's up to it, you can do some slow trotting to get the, you know, just get the body warmed up. Uh, I like to, when I think about how much of a warm up to do, I think about the heart rate. I want to get, start getting the heart rate up, a little bit of panting. I don't want them going overboard. Um, with my dogs, I look at the redness in their ears. I want to see them starting to get a little bit pink. And, um, and just, you know, give your dogs, give that body time to warm up, to work through some of the aches and pains. And, you know, I've seen that with my dog, Bachi. He, um, he has issues Well, he'll do just kind of sporadic limping in the front, in the front leg. And uh, the, the doctors and I, we think it's related to some of the issues in the neck. And I, I know that when I go to the gym and when my back is all stiff and achy, if, if I'm on the treadmill and I work out for about 20 minutes, I feel so much better. Like I can come into the gym all crooked and bent over and in pain and I've got herniated discs because then I just start walking slowly, increasing and, and my body starts to warm up. Um, you know, I start to loosen up those joints and after 20, 30 minutes, like I'm like a completely different person. And one day, um, I mean, you have to know what the problem is with your dog. Why is your dog limping? What's the issue? But there was one time where I got Bachi out of the car and he was fine at home. And I, I had him loose off leash on the field and he, he had a limp. And I was like, okay, where's this limp coming from? Like you were just fine. You were in the car. I have a, a ramp. That's another thing is I use a ramp, especially if you have an SUV, you can get these really nice ramps. Some of them are collapsible or they fold within each other. And um, I use a ramp with my dogs to come in and out of the car. So you're taking off all that impact when they're jumping down out of the back of the car. And, um, and it helps when they start to have mobility issues, you can kind of help them with the harness instead of lifting them into the car, they can walk up the, up the ramp and you can support them. So what happened was we got to the park and he was fine at home. Um, he was fine in the car. I get him out of the car and he's limping, limping, limping. I'm like, you know, all right, let me just, let me just work him through this. Cause I know how I get sometimes when I'm all achy. And so I just let him take it easy. And I just gave him time to warm up. He, he, on his own, he walked and he trotted around the field. And, um, after about, about 10, 15 minutes, I noticed that the limp started to disappear. Um, now again, it depends on what your issue is with your dog and check with your vet. There might be an instance where if they're, you know, they're limping, <laughs> you don't want to be working that dog out. But for him, and I know his issues, I'm like, you know what, I, you know, I think some of these aches and pains, he just needs to loosen up. And there's other times where he had sporadic limping and I started taking him to the swimming pool more. And I noticed that when I took him to the swimming pool more, he was limping less when he was out on land. And so, um, so sometimes, you know, you just have to kind of play it out and see what works for your dog. Um, what your dog responds to, trying to diagnose and figure out what is the issue. You know, is it arthritis? Is it an old injury? Is it a disc issue? 
Um, and you know, that's where your veterinarian is going to have to help you. I knew his issues with the disc because we had an MRI done. Um, you know, we thought that was it, but, um, before I retired him, I'm like, you know, I, I want to know what's wrong with my dog. And, um, if I'm going to retire him, if I retire him because he's having issues, I just, I want to make sure I know what's going on. It's not, you know, is it something that I can fix or is it something that's going to be, you know, that's going to, you know, end his career, um, as a ring sport dog. And so for him, like I wanted a definitive answer. And so, um, we did the MRI and, and I was very glad I had insurance at the time. Um, so thank you. Michael put a link in the discussion thread for the, the Cavaletti. Um, Cavaletti, I originally knew, um, know of it being used first, uh, the most widely with horses. Um, and especially when you're training horses to jump, but a lot of people now are doing similar type of exercises with dogs. Um, so those are some of the things, uh, again, um, you know, don't, Yes, if your dog's retired, yes, you're going to see a decrease of energy, but you know, don't don't put all your energy into that young dog and say, "Oh, we need to prepare and train and condition because of 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 competition." Or we're training and, you know, there's a certain level of training you're working at. Like just it's easy to be so focused on the younger dog because of the activities you're doing, the sports you're doing, but just remember, you know, there's going to be instances where that older dog is potentially going to benefit more from that exercise. And just because they're retired, um, don't forget that they too need a fitness plan. They too need to be getting out and doing canine fitness. And um, there's one more thing that I haven't mentioned. And this is so, so, so very important. And this is watching your dog's weight. Okay. Um, the metabolism slows down. It's like humans. When you're 50 years old, you can't eat like you did when you were 22. And I tell you, I see, um, I see a lot of people, and as their dog's aging, they feed it the same amount of food. And if you're going to have a dog, the time when you really, really, really don't want an overweight dog, like you don't ever want to have a fat dog. But if your dog is aging, and they have arthritis, and their joints are bothering them, and their hip dysplasia is acting up, or their vertebrae issues and their disc issues are starting to be painful. The last thing you want to do is have excess body weight on this dog. And, you know, unless there's a health issue, you know, it's as simple as, you know, two things. You can increase exercise, um, increase exercise and decrease the amount of food they eat. Simply decrease the amount of food they eat. But, you know, I, I just, it really upsets me when I see senior dogs that are already having mobility issues because of all of the issues with aging. And then they have all of this excess fat on them. Um, I, I, it makes me angry and it gets me, it gets me depressed. And when I see them, you know, having trouble moving and the dog has 10 extra pounds or five extra pounds. Um, so when I feed my dogs and I've said this before, I feed my dogs by, you know, look at the recommendations, you know, whether you're doing raw or whether you're doing kibble, what's the recommended amount. But what I do is I eyeball it every single meal, every single time I feed my dog, I look at my dog. Sometimes I feel his ribs. Um, I look, I like to see the last couple ribs. I like to visually, my dog standing there balanced and relaxed. I like to be able to see a couple of his ribs, the last couple ribs. And if I run my fingers over, I don't want to have to push to feel the ribs. I want to feel them lightly, just a thin layer of like fat going over the ribs. And so every time I feed my dogs, I look at my dog, I look at the ribs. Can I feel the ribs? Do I have to feel them? Cause I can't see them. I eyeball my dog and I feed my dog based on how he looks every meal. So if he, if he's looking a little too ribby, then I increase his food a little bit more. If I look at my dog and I'm like, gosh, I can't see any of your ribs. <laughs> you, you gained a little bit of weight. And then I decrease, I take back his food a little bit. And I literally, I feed my dogs twice a day and every feeding, I eyeball them and I put a little more, a little less, a little more, a little less, the same as the day before. And I base it on how they look. Um, so the, um, the, you know, the feeding and watching the weight of the dog, that's a huge, huge thing. Because like I said, when they're having these issues, you don't want to have that extra weight on them. Um, so limitations, just a quick review, limitations to the mobility. And I do have a couple minutes if anybody has questions. Um, think about supporting mobility. Think about helping them get around. And don't forget confidence. You want to keep the dog's confidence. You know, the more they're tripping and slipping and sliding and falling, they're going to start losing their confidence. 
you want that dog to keep mobile and keep that dog's confidence up so that they want to go out and try to walk up the stairs and try to, and it's okay if you're helping them, but you want to also think about keeping their, their confidence up. Exercise is great. Exercise is great. Be careful. You don't want to do that real high impact um, type of activities, high jumps, things like that, because you know, they're aging, their ligament, their tendons, their ligaments. Um, they're just, they're just not as strong as they were when they were younger. And uh, many, 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 many of these dogs, a large percentage of the older dogs are going to be dealing with, you know, arthritis. Um, so those are some things you need to think about. Um, so if you have um, any questions, um, let me know. Um, and I also, if you guys have not taken, if you want to know more about the components of, of having a fit dog, um, we talked a little bit about exercise and weight, but I mean, there's, and just in the realm of exercise, there's so many things to consider from Ex there's exercises for body awareness, exercises for strength, exercises for cardio, um, exercises for flexibility. Um, so if you want to do like a short little self-assessment and kind of get a sense of what what are all the different pieces you need to think about and what are the ones that you feel comfortable with and maybe areas you didn't know that maybe you, you need to know about, um, I have the canine fitness quiz. It's a, uh, the letter K, the number nine, caninefitnessquiz.com. And it's just a really short um, quiz, but it's not like a, a formal assessment, but a short quiz, a little self-assessment um, to look at the different components and the things that are involved in building a fitness program for a dog. And when you do this, think about think about your own dogs and think about where are you strong and where we 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 all are going to have areas we're good at, and there's going to be areas we're not so good at. Like for my dogs, I'm really good at keeping up with different um, different cardio activities. Where do I get a little bit of slack on? Hmm. I probably, no, not probably. I definitely can spend more time on stretching. I can, should be doing more massage. And um, my older dog, I need to up the, I need to do more strength training. Um, it, it's tough sometimes because if he's limping and, you know, I'm going to have limitations. But take the canine fitness quiz. Look at the different components. Think about where do you feel strong in that area where are areas you feel like gosh i need to know more about and also think about within those areas and those questions how are you doing with your own dogs um and and where are some areas that maybe you're ignoring because we want to keep a balanced program so again it's um k9 the letter k the number nine fitness quiz.com um if you want to take that um so so you guys, thank you for joining. We have um, some comments. and I don't see any questions in the comment box in, in the chat, but if anybody has any questions, um, I will go back. If you're watching the replay, if you add some questions, add comments, share if you have a senior dog. What, do, what activities do you like to do with your senior dogs? Um, and, and check that out. But like I said, I, I think a lot of it is, um, oh, Cody, thank you for joining us. Louise, thank you for joining us. Colleen. Um, Colleen said, definitely dealing with a 13-year-old Malamute. Things do uh, do need to get creative. So, yeah, we have to get creative, you guys. Thank you so much, Marilyn, for joining us also. Um, Alora, thank you. Oh, I see a question. Oh, at what time do you transfer to senior dog food? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, you know, it's totally um, – I, I haven't switched foods. Um, on my senior dogs. Um, it depends on your dog's needs. It depends on what your original food, what is the nutritional plan? What, what is your dog getting to begin with? Um, I do, I have supplements and things that I might add, um, but the, the, like the main core of their meal, um, you know, when my 11, when my 11 year old, which is gonna be 11, when she was like six, I might have changed the type of food for different reasons, but I didn't. I didn't say, "Oh, I have to change to a senior dog food." Um, so it's really going to depend on what are you doing with your dog, how your what how your dog does on a particular diet, um, how active you're keeping the dog. Um, there's a lot of different variables. So um, you know, I would suggest you know get if you haven't gone to the vet, you know, and done a full blood work, get a good checkup on your dog. Um, I would recommend that. And when I've changed foods. Um, you know, I guess one thing I have changed foods, but when I changed foods, it wasn't because, oh, my dog's older. I need to change food. I changed food because I was not happy with something. 
For example, my dog was not handling exercise well. He was, we do, did a lot of training, but he was having issues with the heat. Um, he was kind of petering out in, during exercise. Um, and I, I took him to the vet. We ran tests. It was, you know, I talked with the veterinarian and we said, okay, we need to, we, you know, we want to increase a, 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 the dog food that's going to meet his needs because the kind I was feeding wasn't meeting all of the needs and the demands of the work I was doing. So when I changed food, it was because of the activity and I wasn't seeing, say, the performance that I thought my dog should be having. Another time I might have changed food is I, I noticed a change in the coat of the dog. Um, the fur started to getting more dry or my dog starts scratching more when he used to not scratch. And then I'm like, OK, let me look at the food. Um, other times when I've um, changed up the food is, you know, I had a dog and the diet like his stool was constantly it was really soft. Um, and I just couldn't get no matter what I did and whatever I added to the food. And we did all the veterinary checkup. I, I just could not get good stool. It was, it was always just, you know, either not necessarily diarrhea, but you know, it's just, it, it wasn't normal, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks, the dog should not um, have stool like that. And so I switched foods a couple of times and I basically changed food until I saw that my dog was responding well to it. Um, so it's going, it's going to depend on what your original, you know, what is, what is your dog getting right now? Is it sufficient or is there something more that the dog needs? Um, and a lot depends on the activity that you're doing with the dog um, and just the day-to-day -day demands of, of what the dog needs. So, um, so it's really, I, I don't think you can say that there's a particular age or that, oh, you have to change your dog food. Um, but that, 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 that's a good question. But I would think about, you know, well, do you, do you think you need to change the dog food? Why do you think that? Um, you know, is it just because, oh, my dog is one year older, I need to change the dog food. Um, but I would dig a little bit more deeply to think about, you know, why is there a need? Do you feel there's a need to change the food? Um, but that's a good question. I'm looking to see if there's any other. Um, what are my thoughts about CBD oil for dogs in general? Um, another great question. Let me see if I can get that question to show up. Um, okay, I will tell you that I, I'm, I'm not using it. I've been thinking about trying it with bocce. My mom um, just recently started using the CBD oil with my Doberman. Um, and I have friends that are using it with dogs that have had different issues. And like I said, I have not personally used it. I haven't done, I've, I've done a little bit of reading on it. Um, but I, I have friends that are saying they, 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 they're really, they claim that they've seen a big difference, improvement in their dog. Um, again, I would always run something by with your veterinarian, somebody that you trust, you know, uh, on that side of things. Um, but I will say, I don't have any personal experience. Um, I don't use it with my dogs, but I will say I, I have seriously been thinking about, um, uh, uh trying it. Um, my mom's using it. Um, my, she's watching my Doberman right now. Um, but I, I've been thinking about giving it a try with Bachi to see, um, you know, he has that sporadic lameness. Um, he, he gets some issues in the neck. Um, and I wanted to, um, to see if, you know, if it's something that I might not see a difference. Um, yeah. Uh, Conchetta says change in uh, food is important for humans too. Yep. 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 Colleen says I use yoga mats for the floors when needed. Yeah. Some of those yoga mats are excellent. Um, a ramp for the vehicles, hydrotherapy twice a week, massage walks as tolerated rear end strengthening exercises, um, front end strengthening exercises, stretching. Um, we are lacking in core exercises and cardio and you use CBD oil uh, daily. I'm going to put this. Uh, thank you. I'm going to see if I can put this up on the screen for you guys to see. Um, yeah, there's a lot, you know, a lot of things to be thinking about. And, you know, I can't I can't reiterate enough, um, especially, you know, for some particular breeds, the larger dogs, the mobility issues. And, you know, what I see a tendency it seems more often than not when they start to lose mobility, it's that hind end. A lot of times it's that weakness, um, weakness in the hind end. Um, so definitely thinking if your dog's up to it, you know, if, if it, your dog's cleared, there's not an injury preventing you. Um, but incorporating, especially for the dogs that um, it's very common for them to have issues in the spine, the lower back, um, you know, losing strength in the hindquarters. Um, you know, 
don't wait until your dog's nine years old and 10 years old and say, oh, my dog's weak in the hind end. I better do exercises. Um, you know, this isn't something, this is something that your dogs can benefit for, a lot, you know, all the way through, you know, you know, as they're getting older and then as they're aging as a senior. Um, so ideally, you want to be doing these types of things, um, you know, when your dog's physically mature and old enough to have, you know, a regular ongoing fitness program. These are things we should always be thinking about. Um, but knowing as your dog's aging, a lot of times in particular breeds that losing strength in that hind end or having issues or medical you know, problems in the, in, that affect the hindquarters, knowing that ahead of time, what can you be doing now while they're younger and you know, while they're still more mobile to, to try to slow that, that deterioration down as much as possible. Um, but thank you for sharing that, Colleen. Those are all great, great suggestions. Uh, Marilyn says, do you use acupuncture or, or cold um, laser? Um, I have used I have used um, the laser with Bachi. We've done the cold laser with him. Um, we've done it with the physical therapist, and we've done it when we've had his injuries. Um, with the acupuncture, um, I have, again, this is just kind of, you know, I don't have medical reports and, and, and citations to give you. Um, but I have read and I've heard from a number of people things like, for example, with the wobblers disease and some of the neuro neurological um, issues, I've heard some people say that the acupuncture that they've seen um, for some dogs that it's made a big difference. Um, some of the things I've read with the acupuncture, for example, it might help improve the dog. I mean, it's not like fixing, it's not going to fix a problem, but it kind of helps to, can help minimize um, some of the, the symptoms that you're seeing. But I did read, I was looking at stuff around acupuncture and wobblers disease and different things. And some of the stuff that I was reading is in some instances where people saw that it was helping their dog, it was something that they had to kind of do on a continuous basis. It wasn't like they just went in, depending on the issue of the dog. But um, like I said, I was reading up on some of the stuff with wobblers disease and some of the stuff with the aging dogs and neurological stuff um, that it was kind of like, it wasn't like you would just go in one month and be doing acupuncture and then, oh, my dog's feeling better and then you're done. It was kind of stuff that periodically the dog keeps coming in. And we did talk to our vet about it um, with, and, and the vet did recommend it um, for my dog, Rissa, um, who has Wobbler's disease. Um, so if any of you have experiences, um, you know, with the CBD oil, if you have experience with acupuncture um, and, and, you know, different types of, um, you know, alternative ways to deal with some of the common issues we see, please, please um, share your comments, share your experiences. Um, if you have um, any articles or websites or good informational readings or videos, please put those down too, because um, there, there, there's so many different things and different approaches that people will go the non-traditional or non-medical route. Um, sometimes when they've tried different things and things just aren't working, and they explore some of the non-traditional areas. Um, and it would be great just to hear um, people's opinions and experiences. Um, and uh, yeah, Conchetta says slowing down the de deterioration process is um, possible through exercise and the strength training. Yeah, um, and diet is huge. Diet is huge. Um, and having them get the nutritional needs that they, that, they, that they need, that's also important. So one of the things where I talk about canine fitness is you know, if you've got that great fitness program and you're just you're not seeing the, the outcome that you think you should have, um, you know, one of the things you need to look at most definitely is the diet of your dog, because you can have an amazing fitness program. But if you're not keeping up with the nutritional needs of the dog, like everything can go to waste if the dog's not getting the nutritional needs that they need that is going to you know, be required to sustain the quality of life. Um, so yes, um, the, the uh, CZ loop, um, I've heard, I've had people recommend it for the wobbler's disease. Um, I, I don't think I've talked to somebody who's personally used it. Um, and you said you're trying acupuncture. So yes, if you're doing any of these types of things, please just keep us posted. Um, let us know your experience. And I would love, love, love if anybody has any scientific type of reports or papers or things to show um, kind of if there's any um, science or studies to support one way or the other, um, but also just hearing people's different personal experiences because sometimes, you know, sometimes people are just desperate. They're trying to find something to, you know, alleviate pain in their dogs to help with mobility. Um, they've tried all the traditional routes, things aren't successful. And um, some, a lot of times people don't even know that there are other alternatives out there. Some people don't know, for example, oh, you know, you've got acupressure, you know, pressure, you've got 
the acupuncture. Uh, uh, you've got uh, some people, I mean, there's still people that like weren't aware of how common some of the canine massage is. Um, I know people, I've talked to a number of people where their dogs were injured and they didn't realize that there were um, veterinarians that specialized in sports injuries that were specific to sports. And they're like, oh, I didn't even know, you know, I just went to my regular vet down the road. Um, so the more that you guys share, if you do some alternative routes, just so that people know um, something they might want to research or know of other options, especially if they've tried everything else and they're just not getting the outcome and the results that they wanted. Um, so um, Marilyn said acupuncture with electric trim helped your dog um, who was a stroke survivor. He lived five years after a massive stroke and only lost mobility near the end of life. Wow. How old, um, how old did he live to be, um, Marilyn? Wow. And added five years um, with a, um, the massive stroke. Yeah. I'm curious on um, how long he, he lived. What kind of dog was it too? That would be um, interesting. So, yeah. So it's an, it's an important topic. And like I said, you might not have a senior dog right now, but hopefully your dog, you will have one down the road. <laughs> And, um, and like I said, it's not a matter of waiting until your dog gets old and now all of a sudden let's start paying attention. Um, strength training and, and hindquarter you know, strength and body awareness, um, muscle tone and building cardio. These are things we should be doing anyways. But especially as your dog gets older, when you retire your dog, don't forget about these needs. They have these needs too. Just because they're aging, um, don't just you know retire them where they're physical activity. You make it just a fraction of what they used to do when they were competing. Um, Colleen said, I'm using the Azizi loop on your uh, 10 year old that fractured her pelvis with the ilioso as issues. Wow. Yeah. A fractured pelvis. Ouch. Yeah. Let us know um, what, how that, how that's going. Oh, um, here we go. So Marilyn says, uh, Papillon uh, had a stroke at 10 years old. So yeah. So, you know, our senior dogs are special. They're special and, you know, we want, want to do everything we can to help them. And, you know, we want to keep them mobile. We want to keep their confidence. We want to, um, you know, keep that quality of life as long as we can uh, and enjoy our time, you know, every minute we have with them. So um, so thank you. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining me. Um, again, uh, my name is Erica Bowling. This is uh, Northeast Canine Conditioning. On my Facebook business page, you will find me every Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And I encourage you to take a look at the canine fitness quiz, the letter K, the number nine, canine fitness quiz, um, and get a sense of your own, um, your, your own sense of knowledge and, and where also where you are with your dogs. What areas of, are you emphasizing more than others and what areas need to be balanced out and do you need to be paying more attention to? Um, so just a nice little good um, self-reflective tool right there. <laughs> So, all right, you guys, please keep me updated on your dogs. Keep me updated on your senior dogs. Um, if you're trying um, different things to help them out, come back. Come back and give us updates. I get notifications when people add comments. Um, I'd love to, to hear from you. And um, feel free to share videos and photos. And, again, if you have any great resources, articles, videos, um, you know, traditional methods, non-traditional um, ways of dealing with the aging process, we'd love to hear your experiences. So, Thank you so much. Again, 8.30 p.m. every Friday Eastern time on my Northeast Canine Conditioning, my business Facebook page. Come join me live. I love having you guys live. And if any of this was helpful, if you're watching the replay, please, please feel free to share it with others. Um, if there was something helpful, helpful and interesting and informative for you, I'm sure somebody else is going to benefit from it and their dogs. So thank you again. Have a great afternoon, evening, rest of the day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye for now.